I'm Albert Bergeret, back to introduce another Patterbite from New York Gilbert and Sullivan players, Patterpalooza Project. While other notable Patter characters may be described as tedious, fretful, and dictatorial, King Gama from Princess Ida is the character that you truly love to hate. So, of course, I assigned his attention-grabbing entrance to myself. Gama weaponizes his biting wit and cynical views to maintain control over his disadvantaged position. Gilbert styled himself a grumpy curmudgeon, so I tend to see something of a self-portrait in the character of Gama. Topics such as philanthropy, benefit, and income tax make him particularly relatable to the leader of a not-for-profit organization such as NIGASP, though his aggressive and off-putting jabs are not particularly helpful for a fundraiser. Still, the over-the-top humor found in Gama's sarcastic barbs never fails to entertain. If you give me your attention, I will tell you what I am. I'm a genuine philanthropist, all other kinds are sham. Each little fault of temper and each social defect in my erring fellow creatures I endeavor to correct. To all their little weaknesses, I open people's eyes and little plans to snub the self-sufficient I devise. I love my fellow creatures, I do all the good I can. Yet everybody says I'm such a disagreeable man. And I can't think why. To compliments inflated, I've a withering reply. And vanity, I always do my best to mortify. A charitable action I can skillfully dissect. And interested motives I'm delighted to detect. I know everybody's income and what everybody earns. And I carefully compare it with the income tax returns. But to benefit humanity, however much I plan, yet everybody says I'm such a disagreeable man, and I can't think why. I'm sure I'm no ascetic, I'm as pleasant as can be. You'll always find me ready with a crushing repartee. I have an irritating chuckle, I have a celebrated sneer, I have an entertaining snigger. I have a fascinating leer. To everybody's prejudice, I know a thing or two. I can tell a woman's age in half a minute, and I do. But although I try to make myself as pleasant as I can, yet everybody says I am a disagreeable man, and I can't think why. Everybody. We're turning the tables here, and I, Elizabeth Rogers, the pianist with Nygasp, am going to interview Albert Bergeret. Hi, Al. Glad Hello there, Elizabeth. You. Yes, it's great fun to be on the other side for a change. So I know you said something about the model for King Gama being W.S. Gilbert, and if you want to expand on that. Now, there's a famous illustration that Gilbert did of himself. Uh, with his hands in his pocket and scowling, saying, grumpy man. And uh, that seems to be part of the, the charm. Gilbert uh, put himself into all of these pieces very as in his legal reasoning, but he also had a character that was uh, a little bit edgy, shall we say, but his company obviously loved him, and he had a, made a habit of being litigious, and also when he got in court, he could crack jokes faster than anybody else. He usually won the case based on his sense of humor. But you are sort of a throwback to Victorian times as an actor manager, which you are right now. And you also do a great many other things besides act and manage. You are the stage director. You are the conductor. You are the set designer and myriad other things. I've been called the poobah of Nygast, or, or, or to quote uh, the Barbara Seville, the sac totem of Nygast. And I, I have uh, followed opportunities. More than, more than having a preconceived idea, I'm a person who really believes in following whatever opportunity or task needs to be done. And there is actually 
a character who is an actor manager. I was going to say, you led me right to that in the very last Gilbert and Sullivan collaboration, The Grand Duke. Well, the lead tenor role is uh, is Ernest Dumkoff, who professes that a man who can rule a theatrical crew, each member a genius, and some of them too, and manage to humor them early and late, can govern this tuppany state. Well, perhaps we'll even call that a patter song when we get to it. For a tenor, though. For those of you who don't know, Elizabeth and I go way back. I knew her before I knew most of the people now involved with the company. So um, and she's been a, a stalwart in the background for many, many years, and then now has become our primary uh, accompanist and uh, a, a shoulder for me to lean on. Well, thank you very much for that. I actually met Al uh, when he was being a tenor ringer in a chorus that I was playing for, and it took us a while to figure out that we were both involved in Gilbert and Sullivan. So, it, yes, it's a very long time ago when I was young and possibly charming. Well, I can flip it on you, too, and ask you how you came to be associated with Gilbert and Sullivan. Well, that's a long story, but I was taken to the Mikado by a friend's grandmother who took us both. My mother knew some of the music and sang it to me beforehand, and my parents both knew a lot about all the characters and Gilbert and Sullivan and the Victorian era. And I grew up without a television, didn't see very many movies. I was seven years old. I went to concerts and ballet sometimes, and I was completely drawn into the stage and into the characters and the music and became a fan on the spot. Well, it helps to have a, 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 an accomplished musician who also has some appreciation for the material. Thank you, Maestro Bergeret, for joining us in this Topsy Turvy project, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Since I was the interviewer for Al singing King Gama, I will now switch places at the table again and become the interviewee and tell you about some of the other hats that I wear at the piano besides the Gilbert and Sullivan hats, since Al is the master of everything in the Gilbert and Sullivan world. I wear many other hats. I started certainly as a classical pianist. I became in love with Gilbert and Sullivan when I was seven, and I started to try to play some of those early scores. My heart has always been in playing with other people, whether they're instrumentalists or singers. And certainly, my involvement with Gilbert and Sullivan taught me a lot about text. And one of the things I love about Nygasp is that everything comes through the text, through the music, so that the minute people get on stage, they are already the characters. They don't have to do the dancing to become the character. They're already the character. And that's what I like to think about when I'm playing a violin sonata or a Schubert song. What's the character? What's the backstory? How do I make this real and present in the moment. And I learned a lot about that from Gilbert and Sullivan, strange as though it may seem, because I listen to those records over and over and over again. And I, yes, I play a lot of new music and I play a lot of instrumental music, but I always play with somebody and I always try to be in the moment. And I think that my Gilbert and Sullivan hat helps me with that a whole lot. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Paterpalooza Project, an exploration of Gilbert and Sullivan patter songs and the people who perform them. On behalf of New York Gilbert and Sullivan players, I'm Albert Bergeret, and we hope to see you next time for another classic patter bite. I have an irritating chuckle. I have a celebrated sneer. I have an entertaining snigger. I have a fascinating leer. To everybody's prejudice, I know a thing or two. I can tell a woman's age in half a minute, and I do. But although I try to make myself as pleasant as I can, yet everybody says I am a t-